<laughs> Welcome back. It's what we're talking about podcasting exclusively from livingonsports.com. Cheston going over his uh, illegal ways to scheme money if he was a baseball arbiter. I don't believe it's illegal. I just think it's a smart way to make money easily. That's definitely, that's like Tim Donahue betting on games. If I just sell the team he, or player, says, I'll get, I get 10% of whatever my deal is in arbitration. I think that's fine. That has to not be legal. I'm sure it's just kind of frowned upon. <laughs> like, like, you know, okay, on a plane. Yes, type stuff. yes. Like things you can't do in the bathroom on an airplane. Thank you, Bin Laden. Um, speaking of money and arbitration, the Giants avoiding arbitration with their star pitcher. Two years, $23 million. You think that's a little much? I don't think so. You're looking at a guy, I believe he's three years into the league and has won two Cy Young Awards. See, and being three years into the league is what scares me because there's nothing to say he's going to be that good. Now, there's nothing to say he's not going to be. And I don't, this is kind of the issue I have with holdouts in the NFL and arbitration. Yeah, you did good for two years, so we'll pay you what you've earned. But sports is the only thing where it's not performance based. Yeah. I mean, I just think it's so. So hard not to give him. I would have given him more years easily. He's so young and so good. All right, he could easily become Mark Pryor and hurt himself and never recover. But he could go on to be Roger Clemens or Greg Maddox and Randy so Johnson. Then, so then, when he does do that, but he's then already you pay, he, then you pay him. In I believe sixty six percent of his seasons, he's won the Cy Young. If he can keep that up for sixty six percent of his seasons. Yeah, he's played three. Uh huh. <laughs> exactly. Let me just throw a little number game at you. That's a lot. I don't think any other players got that kind of statistics for Cy Youngs. Wow. 66% Technically, over his three seasons. Technically, 66.66 or 6.7. 6.7, six, seven, six, seven repeating, I exactly. think, actually. I just think it's a big number. Oh, my gosh. All right. Well, speaking of big numbers, the Raiders paying kicker, kicker, Sebastian Janikowski, big Money, sixteen million dollar contract, nine million dollars in guaranteed money for four years. Is this too much for a kicker? Really? The next time somebody asks me why the Raiders are a bad franchise, I'm going to point to this paper right here. Yeah. Okay. There's two sides to it. I think it's a big deal for a kicker, and especially that's eighteen million dollars they have committed to Shane Leckler, their punter, and Sebastian Janikowski, their kicker. That's a lot of money to commit to two players that are those two positions. But I think when you're the Raiders and you don't score touchdowns, you can only kick field goals, and you punt it a lot, you got to commit that kind of money. And in an uncapped year, if you can pay them, why not? Why don't you commit that kind of money to somebody who's good? Well, I think that they never have a problem committing money. That's the thing. See, that's the thing, though. This is why they're a bad franchise, because they pay all the wrong guys way too much money. But I don't see what the big deal is if it's an uncapped year and you can afford to get that and another big-name player, which I'm sure they're going to try to do, and pay a first-round pick and a, a large amount of money. Why not spend on these two players that are very necessary with how poor you play. I mean, Jonikowski has scored 1,000 points. He's converted 78.4% of his field goal attempts and 313 of 316 extra point attempts. He scored 95 points in 2009. It's not that his statistics are bad. I just have a hard time believing that any kicker anywhere is worth that kind of money. No, it's hard to say that a kicker's worth that kind of money, but at the same time, I think with an uncapped year and the way players' salaries are getting, you're going to see that. And they're just the first to start the trend. And for a guy that was 6 rate from 50-plus last season, nailed a 61-yarder, I think will break the record of 63. you, you got to commit when your offense can't score touchdowns. If you get on the other, if you get to the 40, you know we can kick it. I know this. I want to I want to get Sebastian Janikowski's agent because I'm graduating in May, <laughs> and I want his agent because that guy knows how to fight. I say good for Janikowski, and I don't think that's all right. I don't think, as opposed to the Tommy Kelly so- contract, the Jamarcus Russell contract, the picks of McFadden, you know, I don't think it ranks anywhere near their past five years' mistakes. One guy who has made a lot of mistakes, at least recently, uh, Dateline Stillwater, Oklahoma, former Oklahoma State coach Son- Sean Sutton, entering a not guilty plea to four. Felony drug-related charges on Tuesday. And wasn't one of the things the DWI? Or was that? Yeah, I think he originally got pulled over for the DUI. I haven't read all of this incredibly long article on (laughs) ESPN.com. But the bottom line is, things not going well for Sean Sutton. Oklahoma State, though, I mean, this is a program that took in James on Curry after he got busted his senior year in high school for drugs. Right. He turned it around, had a good couple of years. I mean, I think he played all four, didn't he? Yeah, well, but but Oklahoma State, 
they're not necessarily a clean program. And now you got an ex coach who's been busted for this. Well, I think even before that, you got to look at '92 when they brought in Sean or Eddie Sutton after he uh, was paying players to come to Kentucky. Yeah, you're I, not a big fan of Eddie Sutton. I no, wish it had been Eddie in the car with him. And I, <laughs> wow, I'm glad it was Sean because he transferred come from Kentucky to Oklahoma State. Uh, yeah, I think Oklahoma State has had some questionable moves, but I don't think you can chalk that up to a former coach doing this. I think that I think it's just another. It's black a blemish. Mark it's a blemish when, when you think Oklahoma State, because as soon as I saw that, I, first thing that came to mind association was Oklahoma State. So yeah, I think that's not good. But I think they made a good move in getting Travis Ford, and they've gotten some pretty good players, and they haven't really had any academic issues, any probationary things that we know about, allegedly. Oh no, alleged <laughs> problems with the program. I think that they're on the right path. Yeah, this is a blemish on there, but I think people will say, well, and Des Bryant is actually the more recent one, I would say. True, true. And that's with their football program. Yeah, but still, I mean, Oklahoma State Athletics, I think that. You know what You know what Coach Gundy thinks of that, though? What's that? That's all I got to say. It makes me want to puke. Yes, Coach, if I were your coach, I mean, if I was coaching Des Bryant, <laughs> I would want to puke, too. Uh, final remarks, anything? Uh, no, nah, I think that uh, Kentucky plays Mississippi State tonight. Looking forward to that. Uh-oh, what time is that game? Right now, 8 o'clock. Oh, you better hurry home. I will. All right. Happy Mardi Gras. For Cheston, I am Michael. Happy Mardi Gras. What are you giving up for Lent? Uh, soda. Okay, that's a good one. You drink a lot of soda. Whoa, what about no rum and Cokes? No vodka Sprites? Uh, it's the Monster Promo team this week at Big 12. <laughs> yes. I think I'll be okay. <laughs> yes, I know. Trav was very, very excited. All right, enough talk about alcohol. We are out the door. Until next time, that's what we're talking about. See ya.